everyone. This is Cynthia Gartman with Seniors Blue Book. And today joining us is Connie Buckwalter with the Mennonite Home Communities. Hi, Connie. Hello. How are you doing today? Wonderful. How are you? I'm good. It's awfully hot outside. That's why I'm sitting in front of your very, very wonderful cool pool. And I'm going to go in for a dive after we're done today, okay? All right. <laughs> <laughs> So Connie, please tell us about yourself and about Mennonite Home Communities. Um, love, love to dive in. Sure. Um, well, Mennonite Home Communities consist of Mennonite Home and Woodcrest Villa. Um, Woodcrest Villa is the independent living um, campus of Mennonite Home Communities and Mennonite Home is where we provide rehab care, personal care, memory support care, and skilled nursing. Uh, Mennonite Home is also how we began. We started in 1903 um, by the Mennonite Church for widows and widowers and orphans, and we evolved over time into um, a focusing on caring for seniors. Um, we are no longer owned by the Mennonite Church. We are an independent nonprofit organization, um, and we continue to grow. Um, as a community, especially up at Woodcrest, where we completed uh, 39 new two-bedroom apartments last year, and we are finishing 34 new villas this year. And then in terms of me and who I am, um, I haven't been here since 1903, but I have been here for 10 years, and um, I love it. I um, am the director of marketing. I came here from Lancaster General Health, where I also worked in marketing. I'm active in the community, but really um, the most important thing to know about me is that um, I feel like I'm, I've met my calling. I love working here. I love working and meeting with the residents, and I love my team of senior living counselors and moving coordinators. Um, everybody has a heart for people. Uh, that's mm -hmm. why you work here. And um, it's just a wonderful organization to be a part of. That's awesome. And I take my hat off to you that you've been there for 10 years. You don't often find in senior residential care that somebody's as long lived as that. So I know that's a great thing. It says a lot about the community and a lot about the company culture. So congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. So today we're talking about retirement living options and understanding the difference. There's a lot of a lot of choices in retirement living options, Connie. How do we begin to understand that difference? Because it is confusing. Yeah. Um, well, I think that um, one of the biggest biggest competitors for um, for us in any way, one of the biggest options, the probably the most popular option for senior living is your own home. People staying in their own home. Um, they figure that um, they love it there. They live there. Um, in many cases for a very long time, they see no reason to move and um, maybe their family um, or friends are helping take care of their house as, as maybe they can't um, do it as well as they once did. And um, they say, well, we'll move when we need to. Um, and so they just like to stay at home. Um, so that's probably the, the number one option for people. Um, and I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying the options in the order of preference but in the order of um of, of how i hear them sometimes um sure. and maybe maybe i will save the best for last but um there's also people and this is probably less common but people um move in with children um and we've joked before that sometimes it's not the ideal situation for the parents or the children but sometimes it's the perfect option um for people um but at some point, again, they might need some um, additional assistance that the children cannot provide. Well, and they're taking an extended family unit and trying to form a new family unit um, when at a particular time, we're also always dealing with a lot of change in life issues and health issues. And so that right. can be really hard. And, and sometimes those adult children are really thinking that they're doing the right thing for mom and dad just thinking that if they don't step in and offer that place to live that they're actually doing their parents a disservice that's not always true sometimes it is right but it's right. not always true mm -hmm. i wish that people would hear that it's important 
to make sure they're in the right care setting. Right, and it's 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 different for each person, really. But yeah. yes, um, absolutely, absolutely. So, what's the next choice? Um, and and some of those people that stay in their home own home also decide that they're just going to do home health um, or home care. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, we do have we even have people at Woodcrest Villa who have that. They just need a little bit of extra assistance, but they're mostly independent, so they they want to stay up at Woodcrest before moving down to Mennonite Home, um, and they get a little bit of help. But that that can um, add up over time. It can be hard to get 24-hour care at times. Um, and there's a lot of great organizations that do provide it, but yeah. um, but it's it's sometimes you have the same person, sometimes you have different people. Um, I, I again each each op I'm just I'm I'm trying not to um, put my opinion on the different options, but um but right. explain what the options are. So home health can definitely be can yeah. be an option for some people. Yeah, and sometimes. It might just be that I need somebody to come in and take my blood pressure, or I need somebody to come in and help me change the linens of the bed. Yeah, but, or remind you about your medicines. But the one thing go. that that doesn't really take care of um, is just social is social isolation, and um, and still you might be able to do some things, but you can't easily get there. And when you're at um, a community, you, you're still able to get around and be around other people. Um, and you're able to still be involved in, in different activities. Absolutely. So Connie, I've heard about 55 plus communities, 55 plus apartment complexes. Isn't, wouldn't that be a good choice for folks? And again, that can be a great choice. We actually have a lot of people who move to us to Woodcrest Villa after um, they've lived in a 55 plus community. Um, okay. But a 55 plus community is basically um, just a neighborhood of um, people who happen to all be over a certain age. And mm -hmm. sometimes they might have a nice clubhouse and sometimes they have some organized activities. But what they don't have is that access to additional care if it's needed. And um, sometimes I, I'm not sure, maybe some do, but um, they may not have the, the extent of amenities that, um, that other communities have and they may not have the meal service and some of the other services that are available through a continuing care or life plan community but they they again serve a great purpose so you don't have to take care of home maintenance in a lot of cases um, mm -hmm. but you usually have to worry about reselling your home um, right. which is something that you don't need to do in a continuing care community so tell us about another name for continuing care community is a life plan community, right? Right. I've heard you that before. So what are the benefits of living in a life plan community? Well, a life plan community is very much like what it sounds. Um, it provides you with a plan for the rest of your life. Um, okay. It's designed for people over the age of 60 with a wide range of amenities and services and access to a full continuum of care. Um, whatever your changing needs might be. Okay, okay. So Connie, um, here we are kind of at the, hopefully the end of the COVID-19 pandemic. Can you give us an idea about the inquiry and touring process for our viewers that are interested? What is it like normally and what is it maybe a little bit different or not different? Can you tell us about that? Sure, um, we um, have been open for a little bit and we're giving in-person tours of existing apartments or villas that are open. Um, we're not going into homes that are occupied by people already because sometimes people want to see a certain style. We might not have one available, um, but we're only showing vacant apartments and villas. We also have some virtual tours online that people can access. Um, our tours are looking a little bit different because everybody's wearing a mask now. So. Um, we do have people check in and we take, take their temperature, just like we have our temperature taken every day. Um, it's the forehead type, so nothing to worry about. Um, and we, um, have, we have hand sanitizer. We ask people to use that when they come in. And so we're just taking the normal precautions that, um, that a lot of businesses are taking. Um, okay. And we need to be really careful um, to protect our staff and our residents and our visitors. Um, but we're excited to be able to see people again. We missed not being able to have people in for a little bit. And so it's yep. nice to um, 
the third perspective residents again, and they're so excited to, to come and visit. That's awesome. Well, your contact information is going to be at the end of this. Is there any final thought or idea that you think you want to share um, today with our, uh, our viewers? Sure. Well, one of the things that we talked about, we talked about some of the different types of communities. And of course, there's also standalone, we do have some standalone um, communities that are just that just provide nursing, that just provide personal care. Um, but I think one of the most important things to, to realize is some of those are for-profit organizations and some are nonprofit. And again, that um, it's not saying that one is, is better than another. Um, again, it all depends on what works best for you. But as a nonprofit uh, community, I can tell you that um, the money that we, that we make, it's, it's our residents' money, and that is reinvested into the community. Um, okay. for improvements that benefit all of the residents. Um, and we also have a benevolent care program, which uh, okay. um, a lot of nonprofit communities have, and that gives people another level of reassurance. So that's sure. an important thing to, to know is, is the community um, will provide care for you throughout your life. And what do they do with the profits that they make? Are they nonprofit or for profit? Okay, that's great. Well, Connie, thank you so much. And I appreciate um, our viewers watching today. And until we see you again, thank you so much. I'm Cynthia Gartman with Seniors Blue Book, and we've been with Connie Buckwalter at the Mennonite Community. Uh, thank you so much, Connie. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.